Hey everyone and welcome to the multi-bin learning pack video. It's been specifically designed to teach you as many of the core mechanics of multi-bins. So with that said, it may come across as a little bit overly complicated because I've tried to pack in so much into this learning pack. So we're going to be touching on the grid, what exactly we consider a multi-bin, the extensions and the dividers. However, we're not going to be covering the drawers, the multi-point connections, which is all the stuff on the outside of the bin shells because all of that's going to get covered over in the multi-point starter pack. So you can either just watch this video or you can print all of these parts and follow along. All the parts are linked down below along with the printing guidelines. All right, let's dive straight into this. With it disassembled and in front of me, let's get started by talking about the dimensions and the grid of multi-bin. This here is a panel. A panel is used to set up a whole bunch of multi-bins in a grid. This grid is made out of a whole bunch of cells and this cell is 50 by 50 millimeters in size. Just for a little bit of context, it is also made out of four multi-board holes that create one cell. Now this cell concept also applies in height. So for instance, this bin shell right here is one cell by one cell by one cell high, but because it has a base, it increases by five millimeters. So this is around about 55 millimeters. And the smallest bin shell you can get is this little guy here. It's called a micro bin shell. You can also get divisions of that cell height. This is a 0.5, so two by two by 0.5 high. And the biggest thing you can get is four by four by four high, unless you have one of the generators for multi-bin. Now, there is a little caveat is as soon as you get about two cells high, I strongly suggest to take a look at the printing guidelines page because you're going to have to take into mind the material shrink factor to be sure that everything works well together. Okay, with that said, let me help you understand exactly what a multi-bin is. So whenever I'm referring to a multi-bin, what I'm actually talking about is a collection of two parts, a shell and an insert together create a multi-bin. Now, what, what on earth? Surely a multi-bin is just this thing here. Well, it is technically, but hear me out. There's a real reason for this madness. This here is a shell. This is the connection system of multibin. And this here is the insert, which is the internal functionality. An insert can truly be anything. This, yes, is a bin insert, which means it is a bin inside of a bin, so it has the functionality of a bin. But this could be a USB holder, a light, a caliper holder, you name it, it can be anything. In fact, this is the key part you remix not the shell. And there's a whole bunch of remixing parts just for this right here. Okay, so we know that these two together, that is the idea of a multi-bin, but what other things do we need to keep in mind while I'm doing all this here? Well, how do you keep an insert in there is one of them. There's two main ways to do this. You can either pin it in or use a magnet. So you'll see on the bottom here, we have this little multi-point slot. We're not gonna get into the functionality of the multi-point, but I am gonna show you how to put the magnet in. So we have this little fold out bottom magnet holder. I put that in and then I'm gonna put a magnet in. Now we do have official multi-board magnets coming real soon. So go and sign up to that waiting list if you want, but you don't need to buy them from me. Ultimately, these are N52 10 millimeters in diameter by two millimeters thick. You then fold this over and then that is held in there. That's not going anywhere. Of course, the brilliant thing about this is that if you ever want to take that out, get yourself a little screwdriver, you pop it into the side here, then you just leverage this out and now you can get that magnet back out really quickly and easily. So there's no need to glue in. That's the key thing is functionality and flexibility within the entire system. So with that in there, we can drop that in and we have the same down here. So this time around, I'm just going to make sure I plop that in like that. I will then drop in a magnet so that it drops in the right orientation. I don't technically need to close this up, but I will. And there we have it. Now this is locked in place. Pull it out and drop it back in. Now I am gonna let you know that if you do do the silly, silly thing of using a very, very, very small internal bin inside of another bin and it has a magnet on it, how on earth do you get this out? 
there is a fail safe to these. Obviously, if you have this in, you can just pull that out and that will take the magnet out. And that means you can take this back out. But let's say you glued in the magnet because you knew I never want to take that magnet back out. Within these small thread holes, you basically just put in a very small Allen key and you just force yourself through it. That will create a little hole in the bottom that lets you then take it back out. Now, this technically means that you have a hole in the bottom of this, but don't worry. All you really have to do is smooth that out with a magnet once again, and then this will still be functional and usable once again. So that is the way out. So we're going to put this just dropping it onto our grid. But how about these micro bins? Because the micro bins show the second functionality of the insert with the shell. So I'm going to go and put this on there. Rather than using a magnet to hold it together, there are these little, I think they're called external pins. I always forget the names. And then this here, you literally just put it into this little side hole there press it down you sometimes need to wiggle it a little bit and it'll click in we'll go to the opposite side we'll do the same press it down click it in we'll go to the other side over here press it down and click it in and the other side there press it down oh there we go press it down and click it in and that is now in there good and proper if you ever want to take this out once again you just rotate the parts that will loosen these out or you can get little tweezers to pull them out. And what this does is basically whenever you're using a micro bin, it brings the function of a bin bottom to an insert. So you don't need to print the entire shell at any point. Now, very quickly, we'll also touch on one little accessory of an accessory, which is the internal bins do have little accessory pins here so you can get yourself this lovely little label holder you can print out your own custom labels and then with that little custom label you can then just drop that down in there click it into place and then all of that is held in place now you can go and print out these custom labels with the label generator you can even do it within the slicer if you really want but we tried to make it as simple as possible so i'm going to pop that on there and now let's go ahead and talk about the extensions and how to sort of amplify our bin shells even further so like I've shown you before, you can stack a bin shell on top of another one and it's going to increase it by one cell in height. But if we wanted that to be more permanent, you would use a bin extension. This here is a click in bin extension, it has this little rim on the bottom that will actually click into a bin. If you wanted to secure it further, it has little holes here. And we know that bin shells has these little holes up at the top. And that is for that little pin that we have here on the same on the micro bin so it's the same pin that goes in there now this one specifically is a universal one with this little cutout which means that it can actually go and connect across bins or if you have a divided bin it can connect on top of that now do keep in mind that when it comes to click in extensions like these this rim actually goes into the usable bin space here so this can only take a one cell high insert but that can be both seen as a pro and a con. And don't worry, there are extensions that use the features on the outside that do not actually cut into the bin size itself. Right, the other fun thing about these lovely extensions, especially the click-in ones, is that if we get this little guy here and the panel, it can just actually click directly into a panel. So that is now in place, clicked in, but that's not very useful. It's got a hole in it. Don't worry. We're just going to get a very short insert here, drop it down in there. And as we know, this insert could technically be anything. This could be a USB holder, could be whatever you want. So now with that in place, let's build this up a little bit more. I'll put that there. I'll get this two by two. We'll put that there. And why not? Let's click this on here. As you can see right this minute, it can move wherever I want it to. But you know what? I don't want it to move. I want it to stay right there for the next part of this and the next part is the dividers because the dividers is what's going to help us keep that in place when it comes to bin dividers they might look pretty complicated but the truth is they're quite simple these are top and this is a bottom a top goes on top of a bottom and there are two different types of tops as you can see one is shorter one is 
taller. This one goes all the way up to the top of a bin. This one stays just under the rim so you can stack things up. And I'll show you that in action in a moment. So let's actually just put this together. I'm going to grab this over here. I'll take this off just for the sake of simplicity. And we'll start with just this here. Yes, this is a top divider. But when you're only using a 0.5, you can just put that directly in there. But how do I stop this moving about? Well, there are these little pins. This is an outer wall pin. So we're just going to grab this little pin. You'll see on the side we have that little hole. We're just going to line that up, line up the divider and push it in. If you find that too hard, you can use the clip tool to push into it. We'll go to the other side here. We'll push this into there, click it in and there we have it. However, how do I remove that before we move any further? It's actually quite simple. We're just going to flex the wall a little bit. That pops it out a little bit there. I like to use some little tweezers for this. And then I'm just going to put the tweezer there, slide it down, pull it out. You can technically just use your fingers as well, but it's up to you how you want to do that. So I'm just going to pop that in there and you'll see that how this is right now. If we were to get our little click in divider, that's going to click in a lot more securely and it's not going to move anywhere at all. Okay, just because I want to show you now a little bit clearer, I'm going to move this off to the side and we're going to get our bottom divider here. Make sure that this hole is up at the top. We're going to slide that in. And now we've got to talk about these little pins because there's actually a few different types. So there's the outer wall pin, which is the one that we've used here on the outside. So I'll just go here and I'll just plop that in right there. Okay, but if I were to use an outer wall one here, it wouldn't be long enough to go in. So what I'm going to have to do is use this one here, which is an inner wall pin, which goes through a divider into another divider. So I'm going to put that up here all the way through, click it all the way in, and that is now in. And now let's add this top to the top here. There is this little clip here and we have the clip tool. These clips can get a little bit hard on your fingers sometimes. So when you put this into the clip tool, sometimes it's best to just hold it over there and then you just push it down. That clips in. We then get the top. We click that in there. That is nice and secure. Let's get our extension now. We'll slide this on there. Click that in. We'll get our outer one right there. Click that in. We'll get our outer one right here and we click that in. And now I can show you in action what I was talking about. So this one here is a top divider. A top divider is going to let us use this space like a normal sort of bin shell would. It's got the exact same dimensions and all the rest. But with this one here that's a little bit shorter, it means that you can have a bin up on the top of it and slide it across. You can also put technically a lid on it and slide it across. It lets you do a whole bunch of things. So with that in place, let's finish this little build off. So I'm going to get this nice little divided insert. We'll put that in there. Why not? Let's also get our little label holder here. I'm going to put number one in there. I'll put number two in here and there. Come on, slowly but surely does it. There we go. We'll then just click that into the top. There we have it. It's now clicked in. And let's also then get this here. We'll drop that in there. We know that that's going to go only up to the top there. We can put this here and let's put that there. Lastly, we have these little lids. This is just a drop on lid and that is there now all set and ready to go. Now with the core mechanics of multi-bin under your belt, you can just see how flexible it is in terms of functionality. Now technically this pack here only just scratches the surface. So I would strongly suggest you go and check out the multi-point pack, which goes ahead and teaches you all of the multi-point connections that are on the outside of the bin shells, as well as simple drawers. Don't forget to join and share your builds over at the multi-board community. And of course, thank you so much for watching and keep making.